Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. There's yet another twist in the Ben Yol saga. The harness trainer and three others allowed to return to Tasmanian tracks with their Tas Racing imposed ban thrown out. The latest development has some up in arms and others weary. Fifteen months after allegations of teen driving and animal cruelty in harness racing were first aired, there's still no resolution. Yeah, probably like a, a washing machine really, it just seems to go around. We go, go forward, um, it just doesn't seem to be a conclusion, which is probably the most frustrating thing. Leading trainer Ben Yole and three associates are allowed to race again. A warning off notice, handed down by Taz Racing, dismissed after a legal battle that's visited the Supreme Court and now the Tasmanian Racing Appeals Board. That body said Taz Racing should have been more cautious in its approach. Meanwhile, a stewards panel convened by the Office of Racing Integrity is still working through the findings of the Murrahee report, handed in six months ago. It does really raise questions over what are the rules, what are people meant to be doing and who's responsible for upholding those rules. We want to know what is Taz Racing going to do about this now to make sure that Ben Yol is not back on the tracks. Taz Racing's given up on the fight, all its options exhausted. Taz Racing felt it was acting with a strong and reasonable basis for issuing the warning off notices, calling the latest news surprising. Racing Minister Jane Howlett is awaiting the stewards panel's final report, due on June 30. A bill for a new integrity system is to be debated in Parliament in the next fortnight. Amid panels, reports, court cases and different regulators facing off, industry participants just want a resolution. Every time they pick up the paper or see the news, it's not a good news story. It's always this same issue going over and over. So I don't think anyone wins. Ben Yol was contacted for comment. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. A group of University of Tasmania students is entering a fifth week of protest action against ties UTAS has with Israeli institutions. More than 20 tents are pitched at the Sandy Bay campus, with students calling for the university to agree to five demands, including at severed ties with Israeli institutions and weapons companies, or join the global academic boycott against the Israeli can't universities. Talk its way out of tangible. Uh, complicity that it sits within and funding arrangements uh, that need to be changed. The protesters adamant they'll continue the encampment over the semester break. The Education Minister is weighing up whether to call a review of the public schooling system. It comes after Labor reiterated its calls for experts to take a closer look at what can be done around our outcome, educational outcomes for our young people here in Tasmania has gotten worse over the decade that the Liberal government has been in power. Minister Joe Palmer also noted opposition to the proposal, including from the Educators Union, but says she'll listen to all points of view. The long weekend is now upon us and that means more people on the roads and our tourist attractions and spending up on travel and entertainment. It's hoped it will bring a boost to small regional operators, but with these mild winter temperatures we're having, one draw card not yet booming, our snowfields. The long weekend weather forecast is in and it's a mixed bag. Temperatures should be several degrees above um, the, the June average through, um, through Saturday. Before a cool change and a few showers round out the public holiday. Colder air moving over the state into to Monday. While there's still plenty of sunshine for those heading away, it's not the news snow bunnies are after. Ben Lomond has delayed the start of its ski season until it has a decent dumping. We might see a tiny bit about um, Ben Lomond, but very little that would you know, be skiable. It's better news for those at the Bowser though. Tasmania's petrol prices are continuing to drop, bucking skyrocketing long weekend price hikes on the mainland. For those making the most of a cheaper litre here, Tasmania police is urging drivers to take care. Slow down, take your time, drive to conditions and have responsibility for your actions out on the roadways. Eyeing off those breaking the road rules, cracking down after a string of speed and drink driving offences detected in the lead-up. 
high speed isn't the right thing. Drink driving isn't the right thing. You're putting yourselves and other members of the community at danger. Victoria East 07, Tasmania News. A major infrastructure project on the northwest coast is now complete. The new $20 million Cam River Bridge is ready for motorists, with the final traffic signals and last road inspection given the green light. The bridge has been designed to better withstand severe weather events after the original structure was damaged in the 2022 floods. It's a major event on the Tasmanian calendar. Dark Mofo's Winter Festival is back for its 11th year. It may be a slightly smaller affair this time around, but the creative minds behind it say it won't disappoint. Although looking a little different, Tasmania's favourite winter festival is back for another exciting year. It isn't the same as previous years. We won't have the art program, we won't have the music program, which Tasmanians and visitors have come and loved, and that's what makes Dark Mofo amazing, but this year we still have some incredible events like the Winter Feast, which is the beating heart of Dark Mofo. Local businesses across the state getting ready to paint the town red. So we expect the city uh, to be lit up red, we expect the community to come out and embrace that, and it's a way for everybody to really link themselves to the festival. Record numbers are expected to bear it all for the annual Solstice Nude Swim. There's the largest ever um, group who will brave the Derwent for the, the nude swim this year. 3,000 brave souls charging the, the waterfront, so uh, my you know, thoughts are with them. While this year's festival will be smaller, a foodie's dream, the Winter Feast, will be in full swing. It wouldn't be winter without heading down to the Winter Feast. There's so many things happening now, so many reasons for, for Tasmanians to get out, um, take part in all the vibrancy that's going on, all those, all those events. The feast will run for two weeks, starting next Thursday. Lily Thompson, 7, Tasmanian News. As former Premier Peter Gutwin limbers up for his big walk, raising awareness for the challenges facing our migrant community, he's been rubbing shoulders with foreign-born workers who now call Tasmania home, dropping into Duquesne Brewery where a large portion of staff are Nepalese. As far as my experience, uh, everyone has been really helpful and feels like a big happy family over here. And Dukan uh, given me really a good environment here to work as well. I've spoken to everybody this week from berry pickers right through to brain surgeons and pharmacists and doctors. Uh, you know, I think people would be surprised, that, you know, right now in Launceston, um, you know, if you've got a sick child, you'll probably see an Indian paediatrician. They'll save your child's life. Ripple and his Duquesne colleagues will be there on Sunday to send Peter off, who's walking 350 kilometres from Burnie to Glenorchy. One person remains in a critical condition at the Royal Hobart Hospital after their car crashed into a truck on the Midland Highway yesterday afternoon. The driver of the truck was unharmed. Investigations into the cause of the crash are ongoing and police are calling for any witnesses to come forward. A new world-class bird rehabilitation treatment facility in Tasmania will soon take flight. Raptor Refuge and Sapphire Freysenae joining forces, giving injured and endangered birds a second chance at life in the wild. Giving Tasmania's most vulnerable raptors a new lease on life. A purpose-built treatment facility is set to take shape right here at the Raptor Refuge in Kettering. It's going to increase our already world-class facilities to make everything up to standard um, and to be able to diagnose birds and get help for them straight away. Anything that we can do to support the, um, the natural environment and their habitat, we, we want to jump into. Currently home to 12 raptors, including four that are endangered. The new centre will provide vital care for injured and sick raptors, nursing them back to optimal health before they can be released. Tassie owes it to our raptors and all our wildlife to do all that we can. The facility is set to be a major step up from the refuge current treatment space, which operates out of a tin shed. It's quite limited in what we can do and how well we can care for the birds. With room for 12 treatment bays and life-saving medical equipment, including an x-ray machine in the new build. When these birds come in, x-ray machines are just a, you know, paramount to be able to find out what's going on. It's integral to be able to pinpoint the issues. 81 raptors were treated in the refuge last year, with 95% of injuries believed to be caused by human interaction. Cars, wires, poison, um, so many things. This is where the new $180,000 treatment facility will be built with construction expected to take around 12 months. 
These raptors will soon be flourishing in their natural environment. Rebecca Gatineris at 7, Tasmanian News. The Dogs Home of Tasmania is launching an urgent plea for support with a $150,000 hole in their budget appearing. A long-term dog food sponsorship has ended, meaning the shelter will have to foot the bill for the more than 100 animals in its care. Things have been challenging for the Dogs Home for a little, for a little while now and certainly we're feeling yeah, the, it's, it's harder to attract the donor dollar. The, the shelter says it's seeing an increase in surrendered dogs with many owners unable to afford veterinary bills. The Hawks are backing themselves to keep the Giants at bay at Utah Stadium tomorrow, bringing an unchanged squad to Launceston. They're on a roll with four wins from five, including the nail-biter against the Saints last time they were down. Hopefully not as close, but um, yeah, it'd be awesome to get another win. And When everyone's on the same page and everyone's pressing and, and getting at the oppo, I think we're a very good side and very hard to play against. And I think we've showed good signs of that recently, especially last week against the Crows. The Hawks meeting a few local players at this afternoon's captain's run, swapping Guernseys as they promote community footy this round. It hasn't taken long to see Bernie mid-season draftee Geordie Payne in action. The teenager gets his first game in blue and white tomorrow, named to run out for the Roos in the VFL as they take on Coburg. He'll wear number 23 when he gets his AFL start, following the footsteps of Ben Mackay and Alistair Clarkson. On a roll in the Women's Super League, Kimbra have a tough task to keep the winning streak going when they face Devonport in the final statewide cup match, who are yet to be defeated this year. Both sides are at full strength and vying to lift the cup for the very first time. We've been working really, really hard this year and we've seen such positive changes, so um, it would be extraordinary for the girls and, and the club to take a first piece of silverware away. It's familiar territory for inaugural Lacoselja Cup winners Glenorchy. No strangers to the final showdown. It's an excellent week. Like it really does bring people together. Um, you know, reflecting on the previous finals, you know, the attendances we tend to bring have been superb. And I think that's a credit to the Lacoselja family and the Croatian community. The winner gets to slot into the Australia Cup's round of 32. And Hobart diver Emily Maney is looking good at the Australian Diving Championships, currently sitting in second place midway through the semi-finals of the 10-metre platform that is currently underway in Adelaide right now. Hopefully she finishes off nice and strong, Kim. Yeah, let's hope so. Thank you very much, Nick. We'll take a commercial break now, and then Peter Murphy will join us with the long weekend weather forecast. Good evening. Well, we've made it to Friday and uh, Hobart and Burnie made it to 14 degrees today. Launceston, Devonport, Scottsdale, Campania and Flinders Island all on our high of 15. Lyre Weenie the low with minus 6.5 but reached 14 today along with Low Head and Grove. St Helens, Friendly Beaches and Bushy Park all 13 and strong 12 degrees. Another dry day behind us. We did have some cloud over the west and east coast but no rain of any significance. That cloud also continues over and off New South Wales. A frontal band of cloud pushes over southern and eastern W away with a cold front clipping there. Tomorrow the large high is positioned over central Australia as a cold front approaches us and a low remains off southern New South Wales. The winds as strong as 10 to 20 knots over western waters grading to lighter variable winds over the remainder, winds turning westerly later over northern waters. The weekend forecast, partly cloudy for Hobart, 13 the maximum. 2 to 12 for Maidina with a shower, a morning frost for Oakland, 0 overnight, 11 the top. Now for Launceston, Partly cloudy day, not real any chance of rain, 14 the maximum, light winds, perfect for football at Utah Stadium as Hawthorne take on that side otherwise known as the Orange Team. Devonport, partly cloudy and 15, minus 2 in Liawini, 9 the maximum tomorrow afternoon. Burnie heading for 15, 13 for Strawn with showers increasing, showers also for Marawar and 14 degrees. St Helens 15, mostly sunny for Swansea, 14 and 14 also for Orford. On Sunday, showers all over, less likely over the north though, southwest to southerly winds. Showers over the west and then extending to the northwest on Monday, mostly fine elsewhere. And showers back again on Tuesday, possible storms over the north and west coasts. Gusty winds will shift westerly later in the day. Further north and a shower and 21 in Perth, cloudy weather in Adelaide, a cool day with a late shower for Melbourne, a shower or two for Canberra and Sydney, and for Brisbane, Cairns, Darwin, the Alice and Broome, a clean sweep of sunny weather. 
Partly cloudy in Hobart, it's 9 at the moment, 8 degrees in Launceston, Devonport currently 10 degrees. And all looking good for the AFL tomorrow, Kim, I reckon GWS are in for a bit of a shock. The Hawks are firing at the moment. I also have misread my calendar, I didn't realise it was a long weekend. Uh, and I didn't also realise that Louise Hubar loves having long weekends off, so I've been roped in for more work. Oh, you've got to come to work, poor Poppet. We are scraping the bottom of the employment barrel, aren't we?